event, I think, represents new forward-thinking thrust that we are making, and that is how we can align what we do with the technology industry. We have about 18 teams at the Tom and Cornell Megathon Hackathon here in Brooklyn at the New Labs. And this is the first time we're partnering with a hackathon at the same time. So it's almost like we have two events in one, which is really exciting. And each team is working with a specific need knower. And the need knower is a person who lives with a disability or who has a close personal or professional connection to the challenge. Each need knower brings their challenge to the group and the group works with them, not for them, but with them in order to solve their challenge. So what we're hoping for is to get 18 working prototypes of solutions that will answer each of the 18 different challenges. It's really important to, to emphasize the fact that we are focusing on unmet needs. So unmet needs mean that or they are way too expensive for people with disabilities to, to, to purchase or they're not even there. One of the great things about this particular hackathon makeathon is it brings so many partners together. Cornell Tech, for one, uh, people with disabilities who live on Roosevelt Island, uh, which is going to be Cornell Tech's new home uh, come July of this year. It also brings together uh, those at entrepreneurship uh, at Cornell who do hackathons uh, all over the place and do them in such uh, great fashion. Also brings together the Yang Tan Institute. Uh, so we're very, very pleased to work with all of these Cornell entities in New York and in Ithaca, and we look forward to doing more of them in the future. Knowing IBM's commitment to uh, research, research's commitment to accessibility, I thought it would be a great uh, marriage of the two topics, our passion for uh, accessibility, our passion for Internet of Things, having the makers here creating fantastic projects to fix the world, and I thought it would be a a good opportunity for IBM and Watson to participate. I think with any event like this when we're bringing together students from across campus, obviously they're building skills, they're gaining a lot of confidence, and they're also learning the value of diversity, not just in different majors, but different perspectives, different maybe socioeconomic standing, different everything. You could see the difference being made in someone's life. You know that there's a challenge out there and you come up with solutions, but you don't really realize how impactful it is until you see the person you're helping interact with your device. And there's just nothing, nothing that compares to that. What happens usually in the process of design, you not necessarily have the person you're designing for during the process. And I think one of the best things about this is the fact that we have the need or the person with disability or the knowledge about the disability as a part of our team that could help us to come up to better results. The fact that we have uh, on-site fabrication's ability also give us the advantage to, to make mock-ups, to trial and error, and um, to come up in a very real solution in a very, very specific time. The importance of asking, what can someone do, not what can't they do? And when it comes to employment for people with disabilities, when it comes to designing for people with disabilities, that's such a key question to ask because once you're able to figure out what they can do, we can find the jobs that, that work for them. It's not that they can't stand for five hours, it's that they can sit for five hours. And thinking about things in that way will allow us to better integrate people with disabilities into the workforce. And I think activities like this hackathon and coming up with new products and solutions that will be able to augment their lives is the first step to really being able to do that as well as increasing education and awareness for what it means to design with accessibility in mind. I'm never disappointed in what the students can come up with. Their creativity is really, it's really inspiring and it's really refreshing and that's the part that makes you really excited to work for 72 hours. And at the end of the weekend, you're exhausted, but the energy of what's happening here is it's indescribable unless you're actually here and you're seeing it and feeling it. It's amazing.